There we go. Oh, at last. <laughs> night. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Wow. Come on, John Stone. What time is this? You're showing up now. Nine o'clock. I've got to go to bed in half an hour. Anyway. You know what it's like. I've had one hell of a day. Oh, flipping heck. So, I'll tell you about it now. Because it blew my mind this morning. Now, I've got to watch what I say because the, uh, <laughs> they might be watching me customers. <laughs> I don't want to say nothing that's going to make them feel embarrassed. But, uh, Counter Z. How you doing, mate? You okay? Um, yeah, let me tell you what happened today. So, I'm halfway through doing one of these uh, little pods, one of these little extensions for uh, Daniel Salero. How you doing, mate? You okay, Sean? F evening, mate. James Lynch. Um, oh, guys, just so you know as well, if you want to be able to leave comments, if you want to be able to leave comments on my live stream, yeah, let me turn the volume off this. Um, I'm just turning it. I'm going to turn this down so we don't get any more interruptions. Right. If you want to leave comments on the live stream, you've got to be a subscriber. Okay. That's how I'm getting these subscribers now. I'm tricking you into it. So if you want to have your little two P's worth, you've got to subscribe to my channel. Now, let me tell you what went on today. So I'm in the middle of doing one of these extensions for the um, window fitting firm that we do work for, Fortress Windows. Fantastic firm. It's the only window firm I've ever worked for that I'm actually proud to be able to say I do work for them. Um, you know, they don't, they're don't. they not into bodge jobs and stuff. The job has to be right. So it's actually a pleasure to work for them. Now, they've got me doing one of these little extension pods. And what I always do is when I'm there on the job, I always end up dealing just directly with the customer then, you know, making it easier. They, they get my phone number so they can ask any questions to me and what have you. One second. You okay? Yeah, so that, that <laughs> watch this now. Watch, this is the good thing about having loads of kids. Like it's like having kids is like having little servants, but you just pay them with um, cocoa pops and <laughs> sugar pops. <laughs> Any minute now, I'm going to get a little delivery. Um, okay, sweetheart. Here you go. Thanks. Say hello. No, nothing there. Put your head in and say hello. No, Don't be shy. Say hello. No. Come on, Maisie. This is my right, this is Maisie behind me and door. She's she's my favourite on there. Come on, say hello. Say hello to her. Come on. Come on. Are you alive? Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> See as you can. So we're doing this uh, doing this pod for them. Anyway. The customers, are, they've got a bathroom going in the middle, so it's like its like an extension of the kitchen, like a kitchen dining room extension. And then in the middle, there's like a bathroom bit. And then the end's like a bedroom extension because they live in a bungalow. So this is like one big extension on the back, but separated into three rooms. And they're sorting their own bathroom out because, you know, it's a window fitting company. They've got a plaster and they've got the guys that build these pods, but they haven't got bathroom fitters that work for them. So the customers are doing their own bathroom. Now, we agreed sort of at the end of last week, the, the bathroom fitter is coming on Wednesday. So I've basically got till Wednesday to make sure that his little bathroom sections all boarded with um, moisture-resistant boards and that weren't out of his way in that area. Anyway, like the, the, the woman who the job's for, like they're getting on a little bit, you know, they're a little bit older in age. She rings me up Saturday. Last night, she rang me up. I said, uh, right, uh, you know, wh wh when's this when's this job getting done? Because the plumber's coming on Monday. I'm thinking, I'm sure you told me Wednesday just the other day. I mean, I actually wrote it in my book. So she was adamant, no, nope, he's coming Monday. You know, and she said, you know, this is dragging on this now. <laughs> the whole job, I think, is about 12 days or something since the broke the ground it's like it's like like that but anyway she's like you know it's dragging on this job now and i'm one of them me it won't cause any problems okay don't worry if they're coming monday i'll come tomorrow i'll come sunday now i'm thinking right let's just get this but let's just get it done so i phoned him um, i've got obviously i know loads of plasters local to me i phoned my mate and said to him mark i said um, are you working Tomorrow, Sunday, he went, no. I said, right, you are now. I'll pick you up in the morning. So I got Mark and Sam to help me. And we went there today to just 
blast it. So I told her we'll be there first thing in the morning. She went, right, okay, yep, yeah, see you tomorrow morning then. So this morning we went there, not that early, half eight, quarter to nine, knocks on the door. They took ages to answer. Then they come to the door, like, oh, what, what time is it? I said, it's like nine o'clock. We didn't expect to see you today. I'm thinking, they phoned me last night telling me that I've got... <laughs> so, oh, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Lovely people. Absolutely fantastic customers. But, you know, you're just thinking, I've got to, like, I've got to pay these two fellas out of my price now. They didn't even have to be there. Oh, anyway. Right. So that's, I've had a mad day. We've been there all day. Completely just boxed off the whole pod. Three rooms plastered and the boarding done and the whole thing cleaned out. Immaculate ready for the plumber for tomorrow. Or the bathroom fitter who probably isn't even going to be there. But the job was dragging on and she didn't like it. So now it's done like that, you know. <laughs> and you get used to this, don't you? Anyone that's in the trade gets used to all this sort of stuff. I've had people phoning me up saying, Look, you know, this job needs to be done by next week. I've got my curtains ordered, you know. <laughs> Move all your other jobs back. My curtains are coming and, 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 and the carpet. So what are you up? <laughs> anyway, uh, where, where do we go up to here? James Lynch, how you doing, mate? Omar. Scatman Omar, Clint, uh, Luke DeCosta, Andy Greenwood. Uh, Luke DeCosta, how are you doing, Kirk? Voice still sounds rough. <sighs> right, I'll tell you what it is. I, I've been I've been talking to people on the internet about this on, on um, Facebook and what have you. Loads of people have got what I've got, like a cough that has lasted for like three months. I think they call it the 100-day cough. So, <clears throat> <sighs> yeah. I'm not so much coughing no more. In fact, I'll tell you something interesting. First thing in the morning when I wake up, my voice is perfect. It's fine. Just through the day, it goes a bit a bit gruff. Um, i got to be careful. Someone said the other day that I was crying wolf by going on about my voice. And I'm like, I've just got to, because I'm on like the screen, I've got to explain to people why I don't sound normal. I'm not crying wolf. I'm not whinging about it. It's just, it is what it is. Anyway. Um... Andy Greenwood, uh, evening Kirk, how do you prepare a wall that's got blown plaster on it? <sighs> if it's just the finish that's blown, if it's just the finishing plaster, I would just scrape it all off with a, with a, with a, a paint, you know, like a wallpaper scraper. Once you get in behind it, you can just take the lot off. I mean, you could, if it's really solid and the scraper's bending and it's not going to go any further, then leave it on. Um, if the wall's completely blown like the sand and cement's come off or the lime plaster's come off back to the brickwork then <clears throat> in my experience once you start taking off plaster like back to the brick and you try and do sections you'll tap it'll be solid and this bit's loose over here and you take the loose bit off right and you've only priced to take the loose bit off and as you take it off it loosens the next bit and before you know it the whole lot's off i mean i've started off before now we have a little patch this big and before you know it, the whole room's off. So don't, don't get caught short if it's if it's if it's paddled in one, but you may as well just take the lot off because it's more than likely that's what's going to happen anyway. So just price for it anyway. Uh, DBT Jambo. Evening Kirk. Been a howling gale in the southwest of Scotland all day. Oh, I tell you something mad actually. Talking about the wind, <clears throat> so um, it's been it's been windy where we are in the northwest on the Whittle. I had to go and pick up when I got all the gear for this job. I was one moisture board short today, and you know nowhere is open today. The only place that's open is being Q. So today, dropped the lads off, got them started. I just shut to being Q as fast as I could. <clears throat> this is bizarre, this isn't it? That's, well, you'll you'll see. So I've got to be in queue. I've got the moisture resistant board and I've come back to the trade counter. Now, if you've ever been to B and Q trade, you, they've got that big door that goes up and down, haven't they? The big you know, they press a button and the, and the door shoots up like a big garage door thing, massive. So I'm stood and the wind's just blowing in that. And I've got my trolley at the counter, and there's a fella sort of stood 
there's two tills and he's stood at that one and I'm sort of over here with my trolley with my plaster ball on it. It just happens to be like a sail in the wind. You know, it's trying to push in. So I'm holding that back. And as the woman's serving me, some fella's coming through the door, this Chinese fella, and he's smashed straight into my trolley. I don't know why, but he's rammed into my trolley and the plasterboard's tipped over off the trolley and hit the fella in the back who's who's getting served. And he's like, Bleh! he's pinned against the counter. So I'm like, oh, sorry, mate, sorry. And he's looking at me as if, like, you know, why have you just done that to me? So I, I instantly just turned around and said, it wasn't me. It was him. <laughs> and this Chinese fella who's, I don't know, he's in his 60s, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, i sorry, you know. So the fella said, oh, it's, don't worry about it. So the Chinese man goes into the shop, like, you know, where he goes into B&Q. And the next minute, they put the door down. So I've let go of it, started getting served. Someone else has come to the door. The flipping door's, like, on a, I don't know, an automatic center. Shut up. The wind's blowing my trolley again, straight back into the same fella. I'm like, flipping, get me out of here. So I go, Sorry, mate, the wind. Anyway, so he's probably thinking now, you're having a laugh here, mate. Here's the funny bit. Goes back to the job. We've we've done the first mix of plastering. We've done all the boarding. We've got the first mix on. Dinner time. We just sat in the van having a bite to eat outside the job. And some fella comes to the house where we're working, sees my van, comes around to me, goes, oh, you're Kirk, are you? I said, yeah. He says it on the side of my van. He said, it was me and being q And it turns out the fella that I knocked into twice in the store was the lady we're working for's brother? <laughs> what are the chances of that? <laughs> Flipping, and bear in mind, being Q is about eight miles away from the job, and it was her brother who come round to the house. Anyway, I just thought that was like, I mean, if it wasn't true, you just think that's complete bullshit, wouldn't you? But I, genuinely, that's the truth. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Ah, oh, right. Sorry. I'll shut up now and just read a few of your comments and answer your questions because I get on a little tangent of wise, don't I? Um, Charles Vinner, how you doing, mate? Uh, Dilo Brown, channel content is minted, mate. Cheers, Dilo, appreciate it, mate. I try my best. I try my best. I'm not, I must admit, I am sorry, by the way. Sorry, I hold my hands up. The last video I put out, like, I'm, I'm still learning how to do sound design, right? And I've just got um, epidemic sounds, like the music library, where I can use their music and I don't get copyright strikes. So I'm trying to put music in my videos. I can't quite figure it out yet. I keep getting... People keep saying, the music's too loud. And I my voice is gone, so I they can't hear me. Oh, yeah. So I apologise that the sound is a bit crap. I'm trying to get better. I'm still learning. All right, just... Just bear with me. I promise one day I'll be really good. Uh, Jimmy87. Evening, Kirk. How you doing, Jimmy? Jamie Redwood. Evening, Kirk. Uh, fibrous plaster from Essex. Great stuff, mate. Got a fibrous man in the house. Nice to have you on, Jamie. Callum Fotter. How we doing, fella? Slick Rick Dastardly. Tell you what, mate. I like that. That is, that is a proper Google name that isn't it slick rick dastardly i like that mate <laughs> hmm. uh, rob evans monkey box oh mate don't start saying things like that um you know about the placebo effect don't you if you start planting these ideas in my mind i'll probably, probably pass away because i believe them matty styles oh mate how you doing i'm good matty thank you mate um Ah, Cunter Z. I think I don't, I'm, that's probably a dodgy name, that me. How many years have you been plastering for? I'm now 30, would love to be in the trade, but most likely too old now. Uh, do you know what? I get asked this all the time about the right age to sort of get into plastering. And I'll be honest with you, I think if you're determined to learn, it doesn't matter how old you are, it does take a little bit of experience. And obviously, the longer you do something, the better you get. But I think you can be a fairly decent standard after about three years of training, I'd say. A full plastered apprenticeship used to take like five years, but 
now, if you're just looking at the universe skimming, I think, you know, three years is, is enough time to really get good at skimming if you want to learn. I've had lads work with me for longer than three years. And, you know, if they're not keen to learn, then you don't you don't get very good at it. So um, I've been plastering for full time since I was 15. And I'm 37 now. So however long that is, I'm not very good at maths. Um 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years full time. When I started to learn to plaster, my old fellow was teaching me plastering the minute I started high school. So, from like the age of 11, was literally when I. So, you don't learn to plaster straight away. You've got to learn to mix first. You've got to learn the process first. So, so from sort of the age of 11, I was getting all that sort of stuff on the hand. And I could plaster the wall perfect before I left high school. Like I could I could already plaster little bathrooms and stuff before I finished school. So when I finished when I was 15, I was sort of like already skimming. Couldn't do. My dad was old school. It was all sand and cement, um, float and set, you know. Um, dry lining was a new thing to my dad, really. Obviously, he could do it, but he wasn't. That wasn't the way he was brought up and taught himself. So I had to sort of learn that on the job, uh, more so from, from doing it, you know, on the building sites, because my dad used to do domestic work, and I hated, because when I was in school, all we ever used to do was domestic work, so I'd go and help him on the weekends, um, I just didn't like it, I just didn't like being in people's houses, because the majority of my job was mix up and clean up, and it just got a bit boring, you know, for me, whole sort of school life, mixing and cleaning, and I could do a little bit of it and clean up, and do, oh, so I said to my dad, if, I want to be, if I'm going to be a plasterer, if I'm not going to go in the army, like that was what the plan was, if I'm going to do plastering, then I want to uh, I want to work on the building sites. So that's why my dad got us on the building sites. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, uh, Pete DiMoro. Hi, Kirk. Been doing a plastering course at college. Just skimmed my small toilet room, including the ceiling. Your videos have been invaluable for the extra tips. They don't teach you. Yeah, spot on. Cheers, mate. Thank you. I try my best. Um, I, fat wallet boy too. Kirk, off topic. Um, but where do you get the ace purple lighting behind you? Right. <laughs> I'll show you. That. Look at that. This, this right, is... Um, Probably not a novelty to some of you guys. Amazon, my daughter got it me. This is me 11 year old. Me, me 11 year old said, Dad, you've got to have this done properly. So she actually did all that for me and got them. She managed to tuck them behind the light, behind the clock as well. So, um, yeah. Amazon, mate, I think they just call them um, LED. Um, if you just put in LED strip lights, you're going to find them. And do you know what, as well? I think that was about six quid or something. So. They're not dear either. Um, where are we up to here? Um, Ningus21, have you ever heard of pink plastering from Merseyside, the lady plasterer? Yes, of course I have. I think she's, um, I think me and um, the pink plasterer are friends on Facebook as well. I'm not, maybe. I'm definitely in a few Facebook groups with her. I hardly ever go on Facebook, but I have actually seen her. Um, I've never met her in person, though. Ian Turner, bet that Chinese man had only nipped in for something. Yeah. <laughs> Wang <Well, we're> Wong. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't do that. I could probably get, probably get booted off YouTube for being racist. Um, uh, ready to burn wood. Hey, these are the guys that make the clocks. This is the people you want to get on to. If you want something as cool as that with your business name on it, or in fact, go and have a look at Ready to Burn Wood Arts channel. They do some amazing artwork. I've been looking at it. It always fascinates me, like in detail drawings of like the Peaky Blinders and dogs and horses. I mean, they just burn it in. It looks amazing. Um, CW, how you doing, mate? Muhammad Ali. It's been a while, mate. Yes, Kirk, hope you're well, mate. Tuned in and you were telling the B&Q story. Love it. Spot on, mate. Um, BRAC. 
the one, the only, the notorious big <laughs> gracing our screens of his beauty. Keep keep going, mate. Keep going. I need this. <laughs> All I ever get in there, right, is stick off my missus and daughters. So I like it when I come out here and you guys are nice to me. Hmm. I'll tell you what's been happening as well. I'm talking about people being nice to me. I don't know what's happened lately. I'm getting some trolling, man. I'm getting some people coming out the woodwork to give me stick. <laughs> I'm like, come on, bring it on. <laughs> Flipping nuts. I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't, right. It's funny, isn't it? People like writing mean stuff to you on the internet. I mean, I don't know if they think it's going to hurt me or not. Because I'll just, if I watch someone's stuff, on the internet, I'll either leave them a nice comment, or if I don't like what they've done, I just, or whatever, I just scroll on. But some people are like, let's let's get him. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I couldn't give a monkey. So, uh, if look, if you want to troll me, then go ahead. But don't waste your time because it's not going to affect me. I don't really care. And uh, do you know what's interesting them? Oh. When you when when you look at people in life, right? When you just just take anybody in life, I always find that the people that are doing really well, the people that are happy and they're being quite successful in whatever they're doing, do you? I've never really met a negative one that wants to pull people down. But I drink, or well, I know I'm, I'm sort of gone teetotal for a little while whilst I'm getting rid of this, but. I drink in some of the, like the, the, well, I only like rough boozes. I don't like sort of fancy eating houses. I drink in all the shit holes, basically, um, around Ellesmere Port, Birkenhead, wherever. You know, I like going to the proper old boozes. And what you find is, it's usually, if you sort of find people that are, you know, not doing so well, they're usually the negative ones that want to give you loads of sticks. So I'm like... I don't get it. I don't, I don't. I think that whole mindset of just trying to pull the people down, it's bad for you. Like, it doesn't bother me, but it's bad for you. I think that is like, I don't know. I'm not trying to say that it's going to make you unsuccessful in life, but I think if that's your mindset where you just want to attack and bite and give people stick, then it's, I think it hurts you more than it hurts the people you're attacking. Does that make sense? Anyway. Anyway, just my thoughts on it, you know. Try, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you compliment people, if I am if I meet people out and about, I'll compliment people on, on the car. So, you know, I'll be in the petrol station and I'll turn to the fella behind me and I'll go, hey, that's a lovely motor you've got there, mate. Fair play to you, you know. I'll give people compliments as I'm just going for my day. And and it makes me feel happier. You know what I mean? It's like it's good for them. It's good for me. <laughs> that. Just try it. Just try it. If you, if you sort of, um, if your disposition is, you, you know, you're inclined to be a negative down person. Some people just got a bit of a pessimistic attitude. That's fine. If you know, if that's the way you're wired, but you can change it. Maybe just try it. Just be nice to people. Compliment people. Do people little favors, and 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 it actually has a great effect on you. I mean, what what was it Jesus said? There's more happiness in giving than what there is in receiving. Maybe you don't believe in Jesus. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. It's a true saying. Um, <sighs> Slick, rip, dastardly, thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Complimenting his name. There you go. <laughs> um, right, I'm falling behind here on the comments. Sorry, guys. Uh, where are we up to? Where are we up to? Uh, Bum, bum, bum. All right, Kirk, glad to hear your voice sounds better. Best blustering channel on YouTube. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Uh, uh, ready to burn wood art. Have you ever tried Venetian blustering? Yes. Yeah, I did a wall in my house. It looked amazing. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, but then um, we decided it was a bit tacky because it was like, you know, the, the, the style that there's probably a lot better stuff out now. The, the way I did it, it was like a marble wall, but the rest of my house was sort of like um, farmyardy style. Like, I'm not very really good with interior designing. My missus likes all the farmyard style stuff, like, you know, like um, like farmhouse style furniture, um, where there's um, 
one marble wall just didn't really fit in. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jack Lewis would love to do Venetian plastering. Maybe just get into it. It's actually not hard to do the um, Venetian plastering. It's more the process that you need to know. I mean, and that's not, it's not overly complicated. And there's, you can do loads of little courses. I mean, only take you a day or two to pick it up, mate. Um, Tim Bell, evening Kirk. Done a bit of skimming today. No rest for the wicked. Yes, mate. I know. <laughs> Feel it for you. MB used to help me dad plaster. I bloody hated every second doing it myself. Each to their own. Well, too many people now do a rapid course, um, put themselves cheap, trial and think they are a master. Correct. Correct. I mean, I don't like pulling people down, but, you know, I would say if you're going to do one of the plastering courses, it's fine to sort of do that and get your mind into how to plaster and understand the process a little bit. But I wouldn't say you can go and do a plastering course and then be set into, you know, set free into the wild and, and expect to be able to turn out good quality work. You'd be better off doing one of those courses so you understand it and then approaching plasterers and saying, look, you know, can I work with you? It's going to work for you. Um, you know, I've got a basic understanding, but I need to... What's the, basically, it, plastering is more about, or I, my opinion is, it's more about learning how to deal with different situations that crop up and and you can't learn that in a day, you know, high suction background to a low suction background to what happens if it's windy, if the heating's on, if, you know, all the different things that can go wrong will, and it's learning how to deal with those things because they don't crop up one after the next, you know, if you could say, okay, today you're going to get something delaminate, tomorrow you have something set too fast, the day after you have this, and if you could do that like that, then yeah, you would be able to master it a lot quicker. But these things happen, you know, every now and then. And that's why it takes so long to learn how to overcome these things when they happen. And then the fellow that's teaching you goes, ah, right, okay, it's peeling. You need to do this, you know. I think that's what takes the time. Um, Ian Turner, you may get your chance to join the army conscription will be uh, from 18 to 40 years of age. Flipping heck. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't really watch the news. I'm just being genuine. I genuinely don't watch that. The news for me, I just believe it's propaganda. Now, my dad is a Die hard, you know, he gets up every morning, puts Sky News on straight away, my old fella. My father-in-law, you know, he literally feeds off the news like that's his whole conversation is what, what the news have, have said. I personally, I, I maybe maybe I've I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe a flipping thing that comes out the mouths. If the news is saying to me, like, I'd say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably why I've got this right because of the news when I got COVID so much I didn't even believe in COVID like I've caught it three times now so I do believe there's such thing as COVID now because it's definitely not a common cold is it but um, yeah well I don't believe the hype I don't believe it's as bad as what they tried to make out but uh, anyway we're going off on a tangent aren't we yeah, if when the news are going banging on so much about one thing like Russia, I'm just thinking, I'm looking the other way and thinking, what are they what are they hiding somewhere else, you know? So I just don't even watch the BBC news or Sky News or none of it. Uh, I'd rather read a book. Um, we are lucky. I spent an apprenticeship mainly skimming um, past 2023 but want to expand my knowledge. Uh, but every firm I go to he seems to just want me sticking to my strengths. <laughs> well, I understand it, but I'm hoping to expand my knowledge. How would you go about it, Big Kirk? Um, maybe work for the firms, but just do your own stuff on the weekends, and then you're going to get a lot of different variety. I mean, I find working for big firms, the majority of the time, you're going to be just doing site bashing, you know, um, dry line and skimming or well maybe there's different stuff happening in your part of the world where, where you are you know um but i would say to, if you want to really expand your knowledge you need to get on the private side of things do do domestic plastering because then you're going to get all sorts of stuff thrown at you you know um 
Frankie Ball, good evening, Kurt. Great channel, mate. Watch all your vids. Just wanted to ask what size trousers you use, length and width. Also, what brand trousers you prefer. Also, a blue or a red, right? I don't watch football. Um, I was I, <laughs> when I was a um, when I was a this all comes from when I was in primary school, right? I was a fat little kid. I was a little chubster. Um, I was, um, right, so the way I was brought up was my dad was like the man of the house, you know. No one stepped out of line in the house because they'd just get beat up, right? That's how my dad used to be. He'd go to the pub, have a few drinks, and if you were naughty, you'd just get punched. So that solved nearly every problem in the house. So what used to happen was my mum used to mummy me to death, you know. She would she would like sort of comp overcompensate for me, dad. So I was a, a little fat mummy's boy, right? And um, and my mum used to like make me, you know, she wants me to look dead cute, little knitted cardigans, hush puppy sandals with me socks on and my school shorts. Right, so I'm going to primary school dressed up like a little bumpkin. <laughs> and then there's kids in school and they've got like, you know, the spray away coat and the rock port boots on. Like, who is this little muppet? You know, when I'm like, you know, eight and nine and stuff. So I used to get picked on in primary school. Used to really get a load of stick off one lad in particular who actually became my best mate in high school, but I'll tell you in a minute. So I never, ever, you know, when you all line up and they pick you who's going to be in the football team, right? I want him. You know, at break time, I want him and I'll have him and I want him, you know. I would be the last person to get picked. And then literally it was like, oh, we've got him. <laughs> like I was a hindrance. So something inside me then just made me hate football. I'm like, I like I don't even want to be in your team. I don't even want to play with you. So I used to just go and do my own thing, like you know. And 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 then I never got into football. I just never played it. Now, funny enough, what happened was um we dad decided that we were going to have to go boxing me and my brother so he took us down to the boxing gym and, uh, and and that was that was that was the end of it now because i was into boxing then i never played football and it's funny how things turn out because once i did a couple of months boxing and sparring i mean there's no running away from from anyone in the ring once you're in the ring like that that's it you know you can't escape so once i actually realized when these kids hit me you know it's nothing and I've, I've been, I've been punched, but I'm like, you know, I'm a little kid. I'm, I've been cracked by my dad. These little, what are these little kids going to do to me? Like, it doesn't hurt, you know? So once I figured out, like in my mind, hang on, they're not that big and scary. The worst thing that these kids can do is just eh, like that. And it doesn't even hurt. And I can hit them back. And they seem to not like it very much. When I was going back to school, then I soon figured out all these kids that are picking on me and bullying me. I mean, uh, well, you can imagine, can't you? I knew how to throw a punch then, and I also knew that their punches don't hurt. So, yeah, it what they didn't bully me for much longer after I started boxing. That was the end of the bullying situation, pretty much. And then, and then they all wanted to be my best mate then, <laughs> which, which I enjoyed as well. So, um, anyway, Jack, Jack Fiddler. That so sorry. That's why I never played football in primary school. And then all the kids got dead good at footy. When we went to high school, they were all like, you know, playing for teams outside the school and all the rest of it. So they were all good at footy. And I just had that idea in my head then that football's not my thing. I don't like it. So I never played it. Um, sorry, mate. And you did ask another question, didn't you? Uh, what size trials you use? 14 inch by four inch trial, carbon steel is what I currently use. Um, and the brand. Um, the only brand that I know that does a 14 by 4 is Marshalltown. I might be wrong, but I'm sure Tyzak and Refiner and Nella, I don't think they do four inch wide trials. My trials are very thin, really. So I hope that answers your question, mate. Um, Jack Fiddler, Kurt, me and the missus have bought a house built in 72. Stipple Artex on every ceiling. Me and my old man have skimmed over them. Uh, what are the chances they contain asbestos? Um, potentially, yes. Good good chance of it, mate. Good chance that they do contain asbestos. If you've skimmed over them, you've encapsulated it, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I don't even want to start going down the asbestos route because there's 
people go wild about it. I'm flipping, especially on, I go on TikTok and do videos on there. And uh, I've had death threats over asbestos. <laughs> I haven't, somebody joking. But basically, in a nutshell, um, Artex contains between 2 and 4% of white asbestos, which just so happens to be the least dangerous of all the different types of asbestos. Apparently, I might be wrong. I'm probably not because I've researched it, but just in case there's a boffin on asbestos, I may be wrong. Between 2 and 4% of the least dangerous type of asbestos. Um, I would imagine, just hear me out with this, if you are removing asbestos that is like lagging round pipes, blue asbestos, brown asbestos, all the different types of potentially more dangerous asbestos, you need a license to do it. You've got to be licensed, okay? The asbestos that is contained in Artex, the Health and Safety Executive have deemed that is okay for the public to remove themselves, okay? So, yeah, you've got to wear a mask and do all it. It's safe, but you haven't got to have a license for the asbestos contained in the Artex. So that reading between the lines tells me that they don't think it's that dangerous because you don't need a license to do it. Better if not, you do. Now, I'm not saying it's not dangerous. I'm not saying it won't kill you. Okay? It, it is dangerous. It can hurt you, but potentially not as bad as some of the other stuff. Okay? So if you're worried about it being in your ceiling, I'm just trying to put your mind at ease a little bit. You've sealed it in now. So even if you knock the ceiling, it's not going to be live in the air. All right. Now, there might be people on here that are going to attack now. Say, no, 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 he's wrong. You, you know, your whole family are at risk. I don't believe that you are. I think you'd be fine. Um, uh, Jeff Edwards, greetings from Australia. How are you doing, mate? I don't know what time is it over there, pal. Um, MB. If they're trolling you, it's getting views, lot awesome. Yeah, that's what I say. That's what I say to them. I say to them, someone wrote on me thing. Um, someone wrote in the comments something like boring, but I hate watching your channel boring. And I had to reply to him just to help the fella because I said to him, now you've commented, right? YouTube's algorithm now thinks that you want to interact with my content so now you're going to get to see even more of me because the algorithm thinks, okay, this guy likes him. He's commenting on his stuff. Let's give him more. Oh, I said, I said obviously, you went to the clever school, didn't you, mate? Obviously. Um, Muhammad Ali, Kurt, mate, being super busy with work, hence not being on much, was wondering if you ever got to the bottom of what plaster is best around fires and log burner openings. Would be great if you did a vid. There's something in the pipeline, mate. I can't say too much yet because it, it might not come off. Um, but uh, we're in like a bit of talks back and two, potentially doing like a, a brand deal, like a sponsorship deal with a company. Um, you'll see. I don't want to spoil it, so we'll just see. We'll see if um, if they come back with the, with the right answers yet. I don't know. Um, Reflex Zrilla. I have no interest in plastering, but I watch your content anyway because it's so funny and entertaining. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Well, I'm saying that. I don't know if to say that's a compliment or an insult. <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing at me plastering or laughing with me. Ajiva Gregor Vicina. Avija Gregor Vicina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I've said your name sort of right. Do you ever use Thistle Pro Jura Finish? Um, no, I've only ever used it once. Um, it's more so if you were going to do like um, high traffic areas, you know, corridors in apartment blocks, maybe hospitals, um, flats, schools. Um, I try, I literally try my hardest to not get involved with that sort of work. What, you know, I'll give you. I'll give you a little bit of insight into how I try and work. I get all the time um, sort of bigger contracts thrown at me. Do I want to take on these little sites of new builds? You know, there's like 12 houses getting built on a cul-de-sac, um, a school, um, you know, different sorts of jobs. Like, like when I was younger, if I got offered these jobs, I'd think I've made it, you know, I've got a big job here, you know. But 
hear me out, hear me out. I tell you, I don't want them sort of jobs. I literally try my best to get away from them. I much prefer doing little jobs, uh, bedrooms, living rooms, you know, little extensions, that sort of stuff. That's what I'd rather do day in, day out. Now, you think that sounds bizarre. I'll tell you why. Let's just say I turn up to do a bathroom ceiling, right? You might get one guy that charges £100 to do it, and you might get me that comes in and charges you £200 to do it, right? Twice as much. It's only 100 quid either way. So if the customers like me or, or like my work better than him, chances are it's only a couple of quid. They'll just go with me, okay? So let's just say you want to be a good top earner. You want to earn plenty of money, right? It's a lot easier to do it doing lots of small jobs because the you can earn a bigger percentage, but the, the what the customers have got to pay isn't that much more. See, I'd make a lot more money if I did two bathroom ceilings in a day every day because let's just say you charged 200 quid for a bathroom ceiling you did two a day it's 400 pound a day okay let's say i went to go and plaster then i don't know a block of apartments a whole block of apartments and i'm going to be there for maybe a month right you times that 400 by a month i'm gonna have a bill you know my bill's gonna be like that and the next guy that comes in that's happy to work for half of that you know so so you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I would, I much rather try and focus my time doing little jobs because I can earn more money. Um, uh, Rob Evans, most trolling is just banter. I know, mate. I know. To be fair, like, uh, and, and to be fair, I usually engage in the banter. You know, um, especially if I've had a few beers. Like it's just a, uh, it's funny to bounce back and forth. But you do get some guys, you know, that just go a bit. There's banter, and then there's people trying to insult you, um, and really going out of the way to insult you. In fact, I'll tell you there, tell you a little situation. Some fella went out of his way. Like I get notifications of comments. Now, I, as I said to you, I'm thick-skinned. I don't really care if people want to have a little pop at me, give me stick them on certain videos, whatever. I'm not bothered. Just keep watching the video, eh? As long as I'm getting my little couple of pennies off YouTube for you watching, I'm happy. You can say what you want. But this lad had gone out of his way to leave a comment on every video and literally insult me. Like he was, you know, would call me names and stuff. And and when I went on my notifications, I could say, wow, I've got like 30 comments and they're all off him. And every single one's giving me a different insult. So, oh, flipping heck. And it had his name. See, like how some of you guys have got your name in. You have like, um, uh, you know, Jigsy's Workshop and and different ones. It had his actual name, like his YouTube name or whatever. Was it? Sorry, it was, it was his TikTok. It was his name. He'd literally had his name on TikTok. So his name was quite distinctive, and I can't remember what it was now. To be quite honest with you, I can't think of his flipping name. It was a good while ago, but it was anyway. It was a bit of a one-off sort of name, and I thought there can't be. That because he not explained this very well. He was evidently a plasterer by the things that he was saying because he was saying certain things that only a plasterer would know. Okay, that's the best way I can say that. So I've literally then thought I'll just find this kid on Facebook. Right? So I just put his name into Facebook and thought I'll just look for it. I'll just click through a few profiles until I find one that's a plasterer. And there's your man straight away. And there he was. And it's funny because when you go on um, when you go on Facebook, he'd filled his his uh, bio in, you know, his little bit about himself, and it had his, you know, where he worked and where he said he worked was um, a plaster at this company, his own company, you know. So you click on that, it takes you straight to his Facebook business page, and on his Facebook business page, it had his phone number, it had his address. When you go back to his profile. I could go on his family. I could see who his mum was, who his dad was, you know. I could see all his friends. He only lived about seven or eight miles up the road from me. <laughs> so I thought, Do you know what, right? I just wrote back on his TikTok. I can't think of his name. I, should, I think it was Mitch, but I might be wrong, so I don't want to make it up. But I think it was Mitch. And I, I put on it, all right, Mitch, um, 
if you carry on the insults, mate, you can say it to me face like I'll nip up to such and such a street, such and such an address. I said, and you wouldn't want me to make a show of you in front of Jessica, his girlfriend, like, you know, put her name on anything. And then straight away, he's coming back. Was, oh, I was only having a laugh, mate. No need to be hard, mate. I was only having a banter with you. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, mate. Yeah, all right, Paul. Um, they make you laugh, don't they? Hey. Make you laugh. I, I was, I'd say sometimes, you know, when your kids grow up, how are they going to feel like, you know, they say, oh, yeah, my dad was a plasterer. My dad did this and this, you know, he was a great fella. I say, and then your kids are going to go, oh, yeah, my dad, he was a troll. <laughs> he used to go on the internet and say mean things to people and, and, and cause arguments, you know. They, they'd be dead proud of you. <laughs> um. Greg Stanforth. Hey up, Kurt, mate. Tuning in from Nottingham. How are you doing, mate? I bought my van from Nottingham. Nice part of the country. Um, Brad Marsh. Positivity is the way forward. Definitely, mate. Right, I'll tell you what, I'm falling behind with the comments here. So I'm just going to... Sorry, I'm just going to skip through a few comments just because the ones I'm replying to are from the conversation we had on earlier. So um, where are we? Um, scatter guy. Hi, Kirk. Stainless or plastic speed skim. Just entering the world of them and don't know what's better. Um, I would get plastic, mate, for the simple reason. Stainless, if you're going to use a metal one, brings the moisture out of the plaster more than what the plastic does. And you'll end up with, like, bubbles and stuff. So I think plastic is better. Um, Richie Livingston. How you doing, Richie? All right, mate. How's things, bud? Spot on. Rich. So I actually know Rich. Lee Murray come round the other day, mate, and uh, he said he'd seen you at the uh, at, at Billy's funeral. So um, yeah, anyway, he said he top lad. He said actually, he said I seen Richie and he was talking to him about YouTube. Spot on, mate. Nice to hear from you. Um, Gerdine, I'm on my second year of my apprenticeship, and all I've ever done is domestic skimming, and it's getting a bit repetitive. Is site work better without all the prep and cleaning, etc. Um, site work is yes, I would recommend, mate. If you're if you're just getting into it, and you can skim. Go and do some site work. Go and work on site. It's harder graft. Any fella that works on site works harder than anybody working domestic work. That it's just the laziest person on the building site is still working harder than what I do on domestic. Literally, price work on site is hard graft. Take me out of the fellas that are still doing it. I literally will never go and do it ever again. I've done it for about, I don't know, eight years, 10 years, whatever. I'm never going back. Um, but you'll get a heck of a lot faster. Trust me, you will have to get faster as well. You'll get a hell of a lot faster. Um, I think it's just good um, to get into that mindset of how hard you have to work every day. You just get into it. It doesn't feel hard when you're doing it, once you get into the rhythm of it. And I think then when you apply that to domestic work, you'll just, it'll be a lot better. I think everyone, every plaster I think should do at least a couple of years on a building site just to get the speed up. Um, when I say getting your speed up as well, I'm not, I don't recommend going like a madman. Without, I've seen lads do that, you know, <laughs> like this with a trial. I don't mean get your speed up like that. You can literally become very fast at plastering by just using good technique. Um, and you'll have to because you have to turn the meters out to get paid. You know, you have to get through a certain amount of meters every day to make it worthwhile. I don't know what the prices are now, but I used to aim to do at least, you know, 80 or 90 metres, you know, I, well, most days I try and turn over 100 metres, but you, if, you, if you're if you not in like 80 or 90 metres, then you, you, it's not worth turning up really. Um, well, the prices I was working for at the time, um, maybe they've got better now since COVID, I don't know. I don't even want to find out either. <laughs> um, how long did it take you to get consistent at plastering? Um, I don't know what you mean by consistent. I don't know really, mate. I, it's 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 hard for me to answer these sort of questions because I don't remember not being able to plaster. Like literally, I, I was plastering when I was in high school, so I don't don't know. It wasn't like I think because I was that young, I just started learning it because that's like you know you're learning everything else at that age, and it wasn't a big deal. 
it wasn't like I had to, I left school and did something else where I didn't have to think for a while and then I had to try and learn to plaster it. It's just, I, I can't really put it into words, mate, to be honest with you. That's a crap answer for you, that isn't it? I'm sorry, mate. I wish I could give you a better insight, but um, it's like, it's like, do you remember riding, you know, do you remember learning to ride your bike good or, you know, it's like it just happened at the time. Um, Fuzzy Lumpkins, I feel like I'm, uh, I am later getting home from, home was on Sundays lately evening, Kirk and um, Trowless. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, some, some days, that that um, last video I posted, I was on the job there till seven o'clock at night. I mean, people always, um, people always go on, don't they, about plasters, you know, having early darts. But they don't complain when you're there for an extra three or four hours. You know, we were to the thistle, not the whistle, didn't we? So, um, Hadley Jones, good evening, Kirk. Hope you're well. And the family and all the plasters are booming. 2024. Thoughts on material bags they're packaged in. Are you finding them becoming weaker? Cutting costs, maybe. Yeah. Bags are finished. are basically wrapped in tissue paper now. You only have to look at one that splits, doesn't it? Um, Tommy, I I tell you what has been a nice little thing that they've done though. When they've put that little layer of polythene in the bags, I mean, I still managed to get damp bags from the builders' merchants, and they've got little rocks in them. I don't know how they managed to get in there through, through the top, but you know. But I think that little bit of plastic lining that they put in there is probably quite good. Um, Tommy, I people who insult are like dogs. Nothing better to do; they just bark. <laughs> um. Uh, skater guy cheers for your response Kirk I really appreciate it no it's a pleasure mate um, where are we going here now uh, uh, Avija Grigolova Senior I, I, sorry I, I can't say your name I'm just going to call you the Visa. I hope that's how you say it. Um, board finish or multi finish, what's better? <sighs> Gotta be careful how you say this because you don't want to start rattling people's cages. If you are learning to plaster, multi finish is going to be better. I would, in my opinion, multi finish doesn't set as fast. And when you wet it, you can bring it back a little bit, you know. If the wall's setting a bit too quick, you can wet it, you can brush it, and you can bring like you bring it back to life a little bit, you know. It's whereas board finish, it seems to pull in a bit quicker and set faster. So, in my opinion, if you're practicing and if you're trying to, you know, if you're learning, I would use multi-finish. I used to say, you know, multi-finish is for beginners, but I know loads of top quality spreads loads of time surf plasters been doing it for you know 30 40 years that love multi-finish so i don't want to offend them guys but i would say um board finish definitely sets a bit quicker so if you if you're learning maybe you want all the time you you can get don't you really um evening kurt mike from mpw absolute legend cheers mike uh, hey, Adam Williams, I could, wondered if you could help me skim the blue gritted ceiling on Sunday. Magic mix. I've heard of this magic mix, mate. I'm assuming when you say magic mix, you put bond in and finish in the same bucket. Um, magic mix first coat, multi second coat, troweling after flattening with speed skim, and it started tearing. Any ideas? It, it might be the magic mix, mate. M maybe. The bonding was, you put a bit too much bonding in and it wasn't setting as fast as the multi-finish that you put on top. Right, so if you, let's just say, for instance, you use too much bonding in the first coat and that's, then the bonding's holding the finish off and it's staying wet. And then you've just put a nice coat of multi-finish on top and that's starting to go off, but underneath still wet. That could have potentially been your problem, mate. I don't, maybe. I personally don't mess around with, um, Magic mixes. Um, I have done nothing against it. I just don't bother doing it just because it's like an extra thing I've got to do. I usually find I can get over almost anything with just finishing plaster. You know, if I'm going over Artex and stuff, I can usually just do it with finishing plaster. Now, people always say to me, do this and do this. And I've done it. I know it's not like I've, I've never, I'm sure sometimes people think I don't know. You know, I've done it. <laughs> but I just find 
then it's I've got to buy a bag of bonding as well, then you know, and I can get away with just doing it finish, so I'll just do it finish. Um where are we going here now? Rob Evans. Uh, yeah, Rob was asking Avija if that's a real name. Uh, Richie Livingston, uh, it'd be good, mate, to get all the old lads together for a beer, mate. I know, yeah. The only thing is now, um, there's that many. I mean, who would we invite, Richie? The, all the, the RWW team, can you imagine? All them. Do you know what? I, I don't want to be with all these blasters. Most blasters are absolute flipping lunatics. I think me, you, Richie, the only normal ones. Can you imagine getting all the lads that used to work? Do you remember the Works Christmas Do's? We used to go on Works Christmas Do's, right? And guaranteed every year. So you imagine this firm had about 100 plasters working for the same firm, for Dave Wearing, who, by the way, is an absolutely lovely legend of a fella. I love the bones of Dave. I haven't seen him for years, but I've got all the time in the world for him. But he used to get, we used to call us Dave Slaves. Right, we go out on a works Christmas do. So you'd get, I don't know, it'd be there about about 40 plasters would turn up and we'd go to the races and he'd this is how nice of a fellow he was. He'd give each gang of plasters an envelope with like hundred quid in it. When you turn up at the races, you go, We oh, are that's for you boys, get yourselves a few drinks. And he'd pay for your tickets to go to the race course as well. So a lovely fella. What would happen is everyone been in the races all day. Loads of ale, fueled up. Soon as you've gone out the race course, you go to the closest weather spoons. 40 plasters in there. And then then they start who's the fastest and who's the best, right? It didn't take long every single year before the whole pub was smashed to pieces because it would just kick off. Because most plasters are absolute lunatics. So <laughs> if you want to go and join them all, Richie, you can. I'll just be in the Labour Club, mate, having a quiet pint. <laughs> uh. Um, Ger, Gerdine, Gerdine, I don't know. Yeah, even after a year, I'd say I could just about manage a 25 square meter ceiling going like a monkey because I've been taught not to go uh, too fast as to keep everything as clean as possible in the house. Yeah, it's surprising though, mate, because when you go on site and you start plastering the plasterboards, um, you find it goes on a heck of a lot neater and you can get a lot more meters done with not much more effort. Um, the only thing is you're going to have to work in a faster system, you know, whereas, you know, we can turn up on domestic and you sort of like pee, site works just boom, 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 you know. Um, yeah. I think site work will make me less nervous about going faster. Definitely. Definitely. And you haven't got customers watching over you as well, you know. Um Clarky 1970, sorry, Clarky 1977. Genuine question. Would a splash of neat SPR into the water before mixing up drywall adhesive affect its performance uh, if it had a sort of waterproof barrier mixed in? Uh, I don't know, mate, is the honest answer. I don't know. Um... I know, I know where you're going with it as well. I know what you're thinking. Could you dry line damp walls? And it's something I've thought about myself. You know, is there any way we could make the adhesive waterproof by adding, you know, SBR? I have the, the thoughts gone through my mind, but I haven't tried it, so I don't know. We could test it. We could, that might be another test. We'll mix. We'll mix adhesive. I've ni I've mixed plaster, neat with SBR, like literally no water. I've just knocked up bonding coat with SBR and filled chases with it because I'm going to skim it the next day and I couldn't be bothered with the high suction. So I just mixed it with the SBR instead. Um, whether they're actually fully waterproof, I don't know. I don't know. Um, South, Oxford, South Oxfordshire plastering. Oh, yo, Kirky boy. Looking good, son. Where's the Cavonia? It's in the fridge down here, mate. Yeah. I'm not going to show you. It genuinely is in the fridge. I like it cold better. I've stopped drinking beer and now I drink cough medicine instead. Um, CW, Kirk dominating the plastering scene on YouTube. Uh, GB, yes, then la. Cheers, mate. I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm dominating anything like what. I'm trying my hardest to do a good channel. I'm trying to make it as good as I can, to be honest with you. Oh! 
Dior, look at this. Stay there. Talking about um right, so I've I've had a, a lady, I put her thing out right. So so I wanted to do merchandise on my channel. I wanted to do t-shirts and plasters and hats and all the rest of the gear, you know, uh, hoodies, socks, and all the rest of it. My thing is, you know, I do, I've got me, I've got me business to run. I've got, um, I've got me family to look after with four kids. My missus has me doing stuff at the farm because she keeps horses. So just sort of running the business and, and looking after my family and pricing jobs keeps me busy enough. But then on the side of that, I've got me YouTube channel, which editing videos, if you don't know, one video takes me two nights to edit. So I'll come in from work and start editing in here. I'll be sat where I am now from like six o'clock in the evening until about 11 o'clock at night for two nights to make one video. That's it. That's the time it takes me to do it. I'll probably get faster when I'm better at doing it. But for now, you know, me like that, that's how long it takes me. Right. And then I've got me little sales and marketing coaching group as well, where, you know, I have, I have phone calls most nights helping fellas, you know, with the social media side of things and getting the Google business accounts running sweet just to bring loads of working for them guys, sort of just to show them what I've done for years because I've, I've never struggled for work, never. But I've always had like a system that I've used to bring work in. So I don't have to like do paid adverts or my building or none of that nonsense. I literally just use social media and a free Google business account to generate work and obviously repeat work and all. Anyway, so I do a little coaching group at so I'm with them guys for an hour or two most days. And then I wanted to do t-shirts and stuff, and I just haven't got the time. Like, like there's no more time to be squeezed out on me to, 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 to do it. So I got a young lady involved and she's built the storefront which is an absolute nightmare, by the way, doing all this. And she's done all designs for T-shirts, and she's, she's basically done everything for me um, to get this storefront up and running. We're that close. We launched the store last night. It was launched last night. It was going to be live today because I wanted to announce it to you today. But YouTube have come back, and something's not right with the store, so they've, they've, they've blocked it out, and they've got to amend a few things. I don't, I don't know, so... So it's not live, but look at this. We got, we wanted to get some t-shirts. So I've got one here, I'm going to show you now. We wanted to get some t-shirts and I needed to know the sizes to like, I'm like, I'm a fat or super fat. So it was like, I needed some XL and double XL and large to see which ones fit me. Because once I know what size I am, then I'm going to buy one of each type of t-shirt that she's made in the right size. So I can wear them myself because I actually want to wear the t-shirts. So, this is the first T-shirt that, that she's made. Now, yeah, that's that's the first design. These are the ones that she sent out and it's got on the back as well. You know, that's the back and that's the front. So they're going to be on the store, but I know that not everyone wants to walk around in a T-shirt with my channel name on it on the trial, you know. So maybe some some guys do, some some probably don't. So what I've also done is I've told her to make a load of T-shirts with just different designs on them. So there's all sorts of um, different stuff. It's all there, ready to go. We've just got to make it go live. We've got to figure Google out and keep them happy so we, we can integrate it. So there's all there's all different ones. She's done one with, um, well, you'll see. I don't want to spoil it. But there's, there's, there's um, Valentine's Day socks on there that we were trying to get launched so that... Um, Fellas can buy the misses these socks for Valentine's Day, uh, saying like you know my plaster knocks me socks off and all different in funny stuff. But we swerved away from all the innuendo stuff, so all the sort of stuff saying um, like you know um, filling holes and cracks and all that you know innuendos. We've we can that we haven't bothered with that. We've just done sort of stuff that you can the novelty stuff, the innuendo stuff might seem funny, but you've got to think who would actually wear this because I wouldn't wear something that's going to turn, I'm going to turn up to a job wearing it and a customer's going to be offended by some crazy, you know, slogan on the front of it. So we didn't go down that route. Um, but yeah, there's quite a bit of selection and we're going to add to the selection um, every month or so. There'll be a new range. There's mugs, there's hats. And anyway, you get the gist of it. When it's up and running, I'll let you know. 
Um, where I've missed it. Let's just go. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to shoot back up to the comments. Uh, bu -bu uh, Richard Grave, uh, what age are you looking at retiring or easing off? Um, when everything's paid off, I'll slow down when um, the kids have left and um, mortgage paid and all. You know, once all your big bills are gone, the kids are gone. I'll probably slow down then. I will never stop. I actually love what I do. I mean, unless my health stops me, I will continue to plaster at least two or three days a week. Uh, I'm not planning on stopping. Um, uh, right, you know, I don't want to say too much because I'm not trying to blow myself up and nothing. With uh, what YouTube sort of pay me now, um, my coaching group, I, I, I'm probably not too far away. Maybe, I don't know, maybe another year of doing this. I probably don't have to plaster anymore if I didn't want to. But I'm not trying to say that thinking I'm dead smart or something, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'm making loads of money. But I literally enjoy plastering, so I'm not planning on stopping, to be honest with you. Um, but what I'm trying to say is I could potentially do it maybe next year if I wanted to, but I won't. There's too much life in the old dog yet. Um, Hugh Sargent, around £3.50 skim on site. The last time I got asked to go on uh, site last summer, and that was in Wrexham. And around the same on the board inside. Yeah, I think it was £2.50 a metre on site. It hasn't gone up much, has it? £2.50 a metre. Um, then again, no, we'd have, well, if you think about it, £2.50 a metre and um, skimming. And if you're knocking out, you know, I used to try and aim for about 100 metres a day, flat out, you know, nine bags of finish every day. That was my thing. I had to, I had to get through nine bags a day. Uh, three mixes, three bags of mix. Um so, yeah, it's an extra £100 a day, really, isn't it? Um, Adam Williams, thanks, Kirk. Note taken. Uh, Rose Milan Sly, hello, pleasure to meet you, sir. My first time here. Welcome, Rose. Uh, oh, my goodness, no one is a moderator here. Yeah, we haven't got any moderators, Rose. <laughs> to be fair, if um, if someone gives, us, gives me any stick in the comments... We just delete them. So we just delete them off the channel. And as well, I mean, why would you want to be mean to me? We don't need moderators. Um, John Earl, hi, Kirk. Saw you in your van today, parked up around lunchtime. Is that a good cafe for lunch? Oh, John Earl, that was, um, I went and got the lads, um, bacon, sausage and egg. I know where you mean. On the high road between Heswell and um, Neston, that's where you see me, wasn't it? So on the way back there, I had to go and get a plasterboard. I pulled in, got the two lads that were on the job for me, bacon, sausage and egg. Promise you, that is the best cafe. I could, there's a food van next door. There's beers, builders, miniatures next door. And I could have gone and got them butties for like, I don't know, three pound a butty. And they're basically just like, Bleh. where is that? That place, I mean, it's dear, but it's good quality. And I always, I always say, right, if you've got fellas working for you, feed them, just feed them. They appreciate it for a start. They think it's a nice little treat they've been fed. And when people have got bellies, you know, that aren't starving, then they're happy to work harder. So it's good for you. It's good for them. So I, I always try and look after the lads, make sure they're not hungry. Um, get in. I genuinely had a customer sit on a camping chair watching me coats on the first few months saying uh, to my boss that he thinks I'm putting it on too thick. <laughs> he was like, yeah, okay. I go over everything. <laughs> oh. uh, slick Rick Dastley, crack open a cold Cavonia. <laughs> no, mate, no, no, no. I'm trying not to get addicted to it, to be honest with you. Richard Grave, ever suffer with tennis elbow, mate? Any remedies? No, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't. I don't seem to suffer with anything like that. Um, I know some fellas get, like, um, trapped nerves, tennis elbow. The only thing I ever had, mate, was um, a bit of, I think it was carpal tunnel in my wrist, um, but I was using a flipping stupid size trial for about three years, which didn't do me any favours. So I stopped doing that. 
started using a little 40, my four inch trowel, and my wrist, you know, when I used to go to the gym and do like deadlifts and all that, my wrist would be hanging off the next day. Whereas now it's it's fine. I mean, I don't go to the gym anymore, either, so <laughs> maybe that fixed it as well. Um, Rob Evans, uh, you're trying to escape all the females in the house in your man cave, Rob. You're about 100% right, mate. That's why do you think I built this in the first place? <laughs> like, just bear in mind, right? This whole office section here was built before I had YouTube, before I was on it. So it wasn't built for this. This was literally where I used to sneak in, like, with a case of ale and just sit in here with me music on my YouTube and just chill out. Um, own it. Well, I say that. I love the bones of them, by the way. But they all want to watch, like, um, I like reading, and they all want to watch Big Brother and I'm a celebrity and all that nonsense. And I can't read in there. So, you know, you go upstairs to to, to lie on the bed or something and read me book. And then the missus comes to bed and puts the lights off because she wants to go to sleep. My missus goes to bed most nights about nine o'clock. I come to life. What time is it now? Quarter past ten. My most productive time is like between 10 and 12 o'clock at night. That's when, if I'm sorting quotes out for jobs, if I'm read anything, I like, that's my most productive hours. I'm a night owl, mate. So I want to lie in bed reading. She's coming to turn the lights off. I can't go downstairs because, you know, our Chloe's like 20. She's got the TV blaring. So I made my own little house out here. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely spot on. Um, Clarky. Uh, where are we up to here? Uh, ever tennis, I'll be, um, yeah. Uh, Cat face enthusiast, do you still get your back blown out for crack rocks? <laughs> we just said we don't need a moderator. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, mate, yeah, every day. Um, Clark in 1977, tennis elbow is actually a tight shoulder muscle causing the pain in the elbow. There you go. Um, Richard Grave, that's good to know, Clark. Uh, been struggling on it for months now. Um, Kane Ito, what's your opinion on shifting a bright light side onto your wall? Done a few walls that are perfect in all lights, and then I go over with a brighter hand light, and it can look awful, but perfect otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think... I don't know. I, I, we used to have sight agents that come shine halogen lights down the walls. So <laughs> I feel your pain. Um I don't know. I think the work has to look good in natural light, but you have got to make sure as well that sunlight will show it up. Someone shining a bright light is no different from when the sun's at a certain angle, you know, especially like, a you know, um, that, that when the sun's just that height in the sky and it really highlights everything. Uh, I don't personally shine lights down the walls, but I know the, that they're fairly good, so I don't worry about it, you know. Um <sighs> CW t-shirts looking crisp, mate, nor face style. Yeah, I was quite impressed with that. I like the way she did it. Um there's she's got she's made socks and mugs and all sorts of stuff, you know, mugs saying like the world's best plaster and all sorts. Of stuff. Oh, and as well, um I, I don't know how long we're allowed to do it for, but um Shopify and Printify, she's used Shopify and Printify to, to do this thing. And basically, um we've got like a because we're like new members, we've got like a or she said to me there's a discount code that we can give to people to give them um 10 percent off. So it basically means that we'll give you this discount code. I will literally make zero pennies from anything on the store, then like literally it takes everything out of it if you get your 10 percent discount off. And um anyway, and then you can have the t-shirts. So yeah, happy days, like eh? happy days. Um Michael Woodward. Uh, uh, could you not do it with your channel on and we put our logo on if that makes sense ah yes yes and no is the ultimate answer no sorry so what mike's on about is can we have t-shirts with my little logo on but you send your work logo in, or that maybe mine's on the sleeve, and you send your work logo in for your business, and you just there's there some way we could just sort of you just send it in, it prints on the t-shirts. 
it is possible, but it would just mean that I've got to pay her to open every email submitted to Printify just to get one T-shirt printed off or maybe like enough T-shirts of one person when they come back. Um, and then your logo will be listed on my storefront. Then it's a bit, it, it is possible, but I'd literally need someone to be on the computer doing that all day, which then they need paying. This whole thing, that, look, just so you know, this whole shop, once it's set up, it's autopilot. I don't have to touch it. All I'm going to do is pay her for doing it. I'm going to pay the lady for building the whole thing and doing the whole thing. But once it's integrated, the only thing that she needs to do then is just give me a new design whenever we ask for one. But apart from that, it runs itself. Uh, they do all the printing, the back end, you know, Printify and Shopify. They do all the shipping, the printing, the money, the returns, everything. All I do is literally just give them the designs and have it on my channel. That's the that's all I have to do. I can make money off it if I put the prices up, or I can just it's not costing me nothing to be, I've, I've just got to pay her for doing it, and that's it. So, I mean, which is peanuts anyway. Um, uh, so, but yeah, to answer your question, mate, no, it'd be, it'd, it'd just cost too much to have it done like that. Sorry. Hush, image -o. Um Kirk, very basic question. What causes bubbles or lumps on plaster? I have a stove and the plaster seems to be lumpy around this area. Love the content here in Ireland. Right, could be a few things. If the plaster's on too thick, it can ripple. And that can cause lumps and bumps if it's on too thick, it's rippled. If someone's put the first coat on, messy, and left big lines and big lumps in it, you know, and then the second coat in it, one the first coat picked up too much, that can cause a lump. If you're on about little pimples, like little bubbles, that can be when there's too much water applied to the plaster and you get a bit of bubbling through. So there's loads of things that can cause it, mate, you know, to be honest with you, it's without... <sighs> this is what I was talking about before. When someone's learned to plaster, Plastering one wall, you can teach someone to do that in a day. You know, you could, you could, well, not maybe two days, you could get someone skimming like one little plasterboard wall. But when they're coming across, you know, plaster needs to go on thicker and you're getting rippling how to deal with that. This is what takes the time to learn, you know. Um, uh, Rob Evans, yeah, that's that's what I'm on about, Rob, filling holes and stuff. We couldn't have any, um, couldn't have all that sort of stuff on a t shirt. Um, Kaneito, appreciate all your work and tips, by the way. Cheers, mate. Had a nice channel. Cheers, pal. Israel, had a zen, yeah. Uh, don't stop, you'll pop your clogs. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Joe Morris, thanks for all the confidence you've given me, Kirk. Help me do some walls in my gaff. Spot on, mate. Thank you. Uh, Michael Woodhouse, uh, we was getting six quid in Liverpool, skim only. That's good, mate. Fair play. Just shows you, doesn't it? Um, Ed Nankfield, lots of money in line work. Hey, Ed, you might like, I'm working on something at the minute with a, a company. You might like some of the content that comes out. There could potentially be quite a bit of line stuff on the channel if things go to plan. Um, John Earl, that's the one. Didn't want to be too specific. Um, coding Malitha. Bro, please help me. Bro, please help. Right. Ask me a question, mate. Um, where are we on? Leighton, where are we? Ask, hey, up, Eric. How are you doing? Ask the plaster. Eric, how are you doing, mate? You okay? Uh, Leighton Daniels. Uh, where, where are we? Kim, what do I think of Venetian plaster? It's, it's yeah it looks nice in the right place you know um i literally never get asked to do it so i don't do any of it to be honest with you mate um but i do think it looks nice um kieran morgan does ka tanking slowly work on plasterboard um no i wouldn't try and tank with her okay let me get this slightly around tanking slurry <sighs> It's not going to stop moisture coming through the place. It's going to, if moisture is coming through, it's going to destroy the plasterboard. So if you're trying to stop moisture coming through from the background, then no, it won't work. If you are using 
um, the tank is funny because you're in a shower area and you want to put the tank story on like a shower proof kit before you tile it, then yes, it will work. But it depends which way the moisture is coming. If it's coming through the plasterboard first, then no, it won't work. If it's going the other way, then it could potentially work. Um, but that is different depending on which situation you use it in. This is a kind of worms, this question. For something like a shower, it'll be fine. But for something where there's pressure, like if you're using it underground, for instance, if you've got a cellar, can you put tanky slurry on the back of plasterboards and then stick them to the wall? No, <laughs> that wouldn't work. I don't think, or I wouldn't try and do it. But if it was in a shower area, then yes, it would work on the outside of the plasterboards, in my opinion. Uh, uh, Liverpool want Burger King or five guys. Well, Listen, mate, they don't sell beer in, five, in uh, Burger King, do they? So it's got to be five guys. Um, Colin O'Brien. I, uh, no, sorry, Kale, Colin O'Brien. I sent you an email. What about uh, that K-Rend R7 Primer? Hope you're well, mate. I'll get on to that, mate. I'm sorry. Sorry. Do you know, if, if I could show you my email inbox, mate, you'd understand. I'm sorry for keeping you hanging on. Um, Irish Suckler Farm. Hi, Kurt. Love your channel. I've recently set up this channel about cattle, etc. Any tips on how to edit videos, etc.? I would need a computer or can I do it? Or can it be done by phone? Um, get CapCut. Use CapCut. I did most of my videos were done on that. I've only the last, I think, it's funny actually. So if you look at my channel, nearly all my videos were all edited on that with CapCut. And I could do it quite fine. Since having my laptop, wow, it's a game changer. Just having it so much bigger on the screen makes editing so much easier. And it's interesting. It took me nearly a year to get from zero to, like, I think, how many subscribers were there? I think it was, like... It took me like a year to get from like nothing to like 10,000 subscribers, like literally a year. And then like literally like three months of having my laptop and I've gone from like 10,000 to like 37,000. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, if it's switching from that to that, that made that happen because of the editing. I don't think it is, but I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, you can do it all on your phone anyway. It's just, you don't realise how hard it is until you get a laptop and you go, ah, this is well easier. Um, Richard Grave, what's the strangest thing a customer has ever done whilst you've been on a job? <laughs> Can't answer that, mate. I've been with some weird people. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I tell you, the, <coughs> I tell you the one. one one that was quite funny though. Uh, this isn't nothing crazy, too crazy. Um, I tell you two. I said two mad things that have happened to me actually. Two mad things because you got to remember, my kids will watch this, so I can't say nothing too crazy. Two mad things. One, I remember the um, the Tour de France being on. So the Tour de France, the fellas got it. We're plastered in his living room, right? And he wants to watch the Tour de France. So why he booked us to plaster his living room on the day that he wants to watch it? I don't know. So we're plastering the wall. So he pulls everything into the middle of the room. I wanted it all out, but he's adamant. It's got to stay in because he's skybox and he needs it all plugged in. So he's in the middle of the room to watch the Tour de France. Right? And it's about to start and it disappears. He's gone. So I'm thinking, it's on in a minute. So if he's gone, what's... Why have we still got his telly and his couch in here? That could have just gone as well. You know, put that in the dining room out the way. He come back downstairs, fully kitted up in all his cycling gear. He went upstairs, put his cycling shoes on, and all his flipping stuff, his lycra and everything, to come and watch the Tour de France. So, <laughs> that was quite funny. That was a strange thing. Just the fact that this fellow went and put all his... It's like when you went... You remember when you are a kid and you watch Rocky and you go and get your boxing gloves on to watch it? It was like that. Right, that was a mad thing. I'll tell you another mad thing. We were doing a job about... <sighs> wasn't even that long ago, just before I started my YouTube channel. And we're working away. And the woman says, right, I've got to go. I'm going to work. And she worked at primary school. So we got all the stuff in the bedroom. like, And, and we're working away. Anyway, I thought, oh, I'll just 
you know, nip round to the shop, leave leave Kane because Kane was working with me. I'll leave Kane in here. Just gonna nip round to the shop and um, go and get a few bits, like you know, a butty and what have you. Tried the front door, locked, locked in. We were locked in. Tried the back door, locked. She locked us in the house while she went to work. So I phoned up and said, oh, We can't get out. And she went, Oh, well, I didn't think you needed to. I said, well, yeah, but we're locked in. And she went, Yeah, but I'll be home before you finished. <laughs> Okay, okay. We're like prisoners. So that was a bit bizarre because she seemed dead normal, but thought it was normal practice to lock people in the house. Like we couldn't get all the windows and everything. Everything was locked. We were like locked in the house. That was nuts because she was such a sound person. And then just, you think people are normal. Is that, that's not normal behavior, that though, is it? To lock someone in. Now, I don't even. I didn't even get to the bottom of it. Maybe she's just one of them people that just locks the front door when she leaves automatically. But I don't know. It just felt a bit like you know. What was that woman um, where, where she she kidnapped him and broke his ankles? You know, was it um, misery? It was like something of misery. You know, I was worried when she come back. I was like, you know, what's she gonna do it you now? <laughs> um. Sorry, I've missed loads of comments. I mean, when, when I start talking, the comments are just going up, and I don't know where I'm up to now. So, sorry if I've missed your comments. I do apologize. Um, Brian's Prime Community, can you give uh, my YouTube channel a shout out, please? Sure. Is that, is that what it's called, mate? Brian's Prime Community. There you go. <laughs> go and check Brian out. <laughs> um, Andy B, 1088. Quick question Have me seen a skimmed over Artex? When I painted it, the paint dried very quick. It took two people to paint it. So what went wrong? I think I think the paint does dry quick. I think what you're probably experiencing is the paint drying patchy rather than it drying because it plaster's bone dry. I mean, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what they've gone over. Finishing plaster. Let me just turn this heat off. Oh, I'm fucking sweating here. It gets too hot. Um that's the only thing with this. I insulated it that well. I've got an electric heater, and it's that well insulated that when I turn the heater on, it goes from like um, like cold to red hot fast. And then, yeah, it'll stay red hot now. So, um, plaster's bone dry, mate. So it doesn't matter what they've gone over; it's going to dry in quick anyway. You're probably experiencing uh, the paint drying patchy, which, in my experience, when I've painted my own plastering which by the way is hardly ever i only ever do it in my own house if i plaster a room in my own house then I'll, i'm down for painting it as well according to the missus if i use crown paint like cheap paint you may you give it like 10 coats and it still looks patchy i went and bought john stone's paint because uh, it was the best trade paint they had in the builders merchants i i, I like the name of it because it's my same surname but that wasn't the reason but i bought, bought john stone's trade paint um, two coats and it was perfect. One coat was good enough. I get, I'd give it two coats anyway, just because you know you, you may as well, mightn't you? Because you're there. And um, two coats of that, and it was spot on. So I think, mate, you might have been experiencing cheap paint, but I, I'm not saying you're a cheapskate. I don't know. I wasn't there, and I'm not a painter and decorator, so I don't, I don't know, mate. To be honest with you, what happened? Um, diggable plum. Do you use blue grit? And is it any good? Yeah, well, <clears throat> we actually did a test of blue grit. We did a um, we did a suction control test and then a um, pull test to see which primers work the best. And it turns out, to my surprise, that blue grit um, won. <laughs> I like SBR. I hardly ever. I only ever use grit if I've got a. Say, for instance, if someone's got massive bifold doors that go around the corner and underneath. Um, where where you've got to stick your plasterboard, the smooth steel. Sometimes you get those, and there's 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 no overhang, there's nothing. It's just a smooth like box section of steel. So I will grit those before I um, dab plasterboards on. That's the only time I ever really use blue grit. I never use it for skimming over, um, because the skim has to go on a little bit thick. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, I just don't like using it to skim over it personally. Um, Carvin Jones, I've got a scraped textured silicone render coming up. 
straight texture silicone. Okay, yeah, a monocle's render. The customer is twitchy about it, discoloring. Any product recommendations? Yeah, look, nearly all of them. Um, I, I use K-Rend mainly because that's where everywhere around me stocks K-Rend. So I just I just use K-Rend most of the time. Um, and most of them sell a sealer. So if you worry about this colouring, just buy the sealer. I mean, one tub of sealer usually sell about the same amount. We'll do the whole house usually. So um, I will just seal it afterwards. And then it just gives it a bit more protection from the discoloration from water staining and that sort of stuff. Um, I think the sealers usually cost about 100, between 100 and 200 quid for the top of it, which after you've rendered the whole house, I mean, that's going to be thousands and thousands, isn't it? So another 200 quid is like a plop in the ocean just to have it sealed as well. Um, and it's colourless, the sealer. Um, it's not, don't get confused because... Some of these companies also do like little touch-up paints and other stuff that they call sealers for when they've had ghost lines and all that. It's not like this stuff you you sort of seal it. You know, it's like a clear sealer. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I was looking for Thanks, mate. Uh, I have three subscribers. To be honest with you, mate, when I first started my channel, I wasn't trying to get... I didn't think people were going to watch it. I started my channel making videos... <clears throat> For me, little boy, for me, son, I, f I thought to myself, because I'm like 37 now and he's just, you know, he's one. So I thought, I want to teach him to plaster, but he might not want to be a plasterer. And I want to leave videos for him because, I don't know, I just wanted to I wanted to be able to show him stuff that I potentially might, you know, might not be able to show him. I'm not saying we're going to die, but, you know, in the future... We might never do a pebble dashing job together in the five years that he works with me or whatever. So I thought, well, if I record these things, at least if he wants a point of reference, you know, of his old man, he can check back and go, yeah, I'm never doing it that way, Dad. <laughs> you know, he might go, yeah, all the ways my dad does it, I don't want to do it them ways. So at least he's got a point of reference. So I wanted to upload videos on, onto YouTube for him so that they would never be deleted, would never lose them because... These guys know the story. A lot of the subscribers that have seen me for a while, they know what the score is. So I don't want to bore them by going over the same story again. But my missus likes photos and we lost loads once. So now she stores everything on Facebook. And I was doing the same thing. I wanted to store videos from his son on YouTube and as well inject a little bit of my personality into them so that in the future, like my grandkids and my great grandkids will be able to click on and see who the, you know, who the granddad was and what he's about. I never really got to know my two granddads. They both died when I was very young, but they were both great fellas. Um, one of my granddads was a PTI in the army. Um, proper man's man. So, you know, he was one of these physical training instructors. You know, get down and give me press-ups. He was one of them type of guys. I would have loved to have got to know him. And my other granddad was deaf from the age of seven. He fell over, banged his head, and couldn't hear a peep from the age of seven. But... Um, drove an ambulance in the war, uh, you know, used to go around picking body parts up and he was a tanker driver and a coach driver. That's my dad's dad. Um, and obviously he did a bit of plastering with my dad as well. So I would have loved to have got to know him a little bit. And, and, and anyway, I just thought, wouldn't it be great if I had a diary or a journal or something where I could read their, you know, if I could just look at what they you know, were into. There's nothing, there's nothing on either of them. Couple of photographs, that's all I've got. Photographs and the odd story of my parents. So I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I sort of made a few videos and let people get to know me a little bit for me grand, you know, so when my grandkids want to click on, they go, oh, that's what my granddad was like, you know. He was daft, you know, he's, he's quite funny, quite a chilled out, laid back guy. That's the idea of the videos. But then I started getting subscribers. People started watching me stuff. And then people started asking me questions. Can you make a video on this? And then before you know it, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I will. And then before I know it, me, not me focus has shifted. I mean, this channel's still for me, lad. But but now, you know, it's it's grown. It's, it's got arms and legs now. And then, you know, I've discovered I could monetize it. There we are. YouTube plaster. <laughs> Wasn't the intention what's where we've ended up. So all I would say to you, mate, is... If you're looking to grow your channel, maybe 
have someone in mind and speak to them. Like I speak to my videos, like I'm speaking to me son. That's how I envision, you know, I'm talking to him. And obviously, you know, people pick up on that. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, anyway, there you have it. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, Dingle Plum, lol. Uh, where are we? Yeah, imagine you had a fire and you were locked in. I know, yeah, that's what I was thinking, mate. Um, JG, hello, fella. I'm a new sub. Uh, see a short of yours, then watch your vid. Now, subs, I find you a genuine fella. You get what it says on the tin. Cheers, mate. I try and be as straight as I can. Um, the only th I'll tell you the only thing, mate. You do, you do get me, right? You just get a watered down version of me. That's all. That's all. That's all. The best way of saying it. Like, I'm not really. Um, I am quite uh, opinionated in that. But you have to sort of be a little bit careful on on the internet with YouTube and stuff because if you say something that offends somebody and your channel gets reviewed, it can just get deleted. So you've got to sort of be a bit careful. You know, I don't want to. If you, not that I'm an offensive person, but you've got to tone it down just to just you just got to water it down a little bit, is what I'm saying. Um, uh, horse sheet, uh, super latex from Leyland on here, plaster works well, fantastic. Uh, Liverpool one, would you not miss coat skim skim ceiling to avoid the patchy paint? Good shout. I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start decorating, mate, to be honest with you. Um, but I know you're giving the other guy advice that was asking me for. Uh, Andrew Howard, imagine if 50 years ago people were videoing their work, how great would it be to watch it all now? Like, this is what this is what I'm saying, mate. So, let me, you know, let me just see if, I can, if I've got one to hand with right there. Uh, I don't know where they've all gone. Anyway, whatever. I've got loads of plastering books down here. But what I was going to say was, can you imagine if the likes of um, Stag or Miller or, or um, J.B. Taylor, all the great, you know, the authors that wrote plastering books, can you imagine if they had YouTube then? Do you, I'm just thinking to myself, do you think they would have wrote a book or just made videos instead? I mean, I can learn. For, I love reading. I am a bookworm. I love it. But I think I'll learn easier by watching as well as listening at the same time, you know? So I definitely think the guys that wrote the books would have made videos if they had the option, 100%. And I know for a fact, I mean, we would have had... Imagine the insight into some of the stuff. Anyway, reminiscing over stuff that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Liverpool, <laughs> Liverpool one makes sense now as I've watched a lot of your vids and I've suddenly got the feeling that you're my old man <laughs> yeah. just don't be coming at me for pocket money mate I've got enough on the list in there all right <laughs> JG I understand monitoring yeah that's it mate you never know never know you say one thing I mean yeah I'll give you the prime example I'll give you a prime example I used to say all sorts of things on Facebook right not necessarily um, offensive things, but, you know, I'd put my views on, on Facebook. Come COVID, right, when all these censorships started, when people were getting, like, flipping censored for all sorts of things about, the, we're not going to say it, but, you know, the old uh, in the arm, yeah, people were saying stuff about that. And next minute, they were getting just the accounts locked on Facebook. I started getting posts that had done, Three years ago, we're getting me community strikes and all sorts. Like my Facebook account was getting locked. So, even if you say something now that doesn't upset somebody now, in five, I mean, I was saying before about the Chinese fella, right? In five years' time, that could be a big thing. Like people going on about racism and all that. And then someone could come back and sense that this video gets me whole channel took down. That's the that's the thing with social media. You say something, it's on there forever, and then you never know how things change in the future. So, I mean, so so if you're if you're from the future and you're watching this, 
just know this, right? I love everybody. I've got no hard feelings against any different ethnicity or anything. I just like pe people are people, aren't they? It doesn't matter where you are in the world. We all want the same thing. We all just want to go to work and look after our families and have a nice, happy life. We're all the same. Hey, cut us open. We're all the same inside, aren't we? I love everyone. <laughs> and I'm, and also as well, just whilst we're on the difference of the people, I don't care what you're into, what you do behind closed doors. As long as you ain't hurting anybody, right, you do what you want. As long as you ain't hurting other people, right, or trying to teach my kids, tell my kids that they've got to, you know, do what you do. As long as you're not doing that, I'm happy for you. You crack on, do whatever you want. Um... <sighs> Hushima Josh, what advice would you have for a would-be apprentice? Cheers, mate. Okay. Would-be apprentice, advice. The fella that is teaching you to plaster is losing money to teach you, okay? What you are going to be doing when you're mixing plaster and getting things wrong and making a mess, because it will happen. You've got to get it. You've got to make mistakes to learn. OK, you don't learn to walk by getting up and walking. You learn to walk by falling over that many times. You learn how to not fall over. OK, so any would be apprentice, you are going to make mistakes. Fine. The fellow that's teaching you knows it's going to happen. Fine. Uh, do us a favor, Deadpool. Stop typing F, mate. Just chill out and you can stay. If you keep doing it, I'll have to stop you. Um, mate, you're making me comments. Go away. Don't make me tell you again. <laughs> stop it. Uh, right. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. It's all right. All it is, mate, I'm trying to read the comments, and the more you do that, they go up the screen. Um, no, he's okay. He said sorry, so if he stops, it's fine. Um, the fellow that's going to be teaching you, mate, is, is going to be paying you out of his own money, money that he can make himself, right, without you being there. A plaster, can, I can knock a bucket up in two seconds. Well, not, no, a minute. I can mix a bucket of plaster in a minute and tip it out myself and wash out. It's not a problem. So, for me to have an apprentice with me, I'm literally paying him out of my own wages because he's not making me any money yet. I'm teaching him with the hope that he's going to make me money in the near future. So with that in mind, give the fellow that's teaching you respect. Listen to what he says and try your hardest. In your apprenticeship years, just forget about money for a minute. Just put money to the back of your mind for a minute. That will come later and lots of it will come. But for the time, just Try your best to do what the fellow that's teaching you is telling you to do. And if if you're watching, say, my videos and I'm showing you a different way and he's telling you this way, just do it his way for now. Just do what he wants you to do. You'll learn so much quicker because he'll have the inspiration to teach you. If he can see that you're trying to learn, he'll, he'll have more time for you. If you're arguing, trying to do things your own way, thinking you know best, then he's going to, his enthusiasm to teach you won't be as strong say because you'd be getting under his skin and pissing him off so just just go with what he's going to show you it takes a long time and you might feel like you're being took advantage of you know because it might be like two or three years it takes time to get good at plastering so just just go with it you know um you want to master mixing make sure you can mix and get everything spotless first you need to get them things right you need to learn the system when you pull up at a job the fella doesn't need to tell you every single day get the dust sheets get the sealer the primer the spr the pva whatever unscrew the sockets he doesn't need to tell you what try and think every job you do is it's going to be a similar process so just remember what he's telling you try and try and be a bit more on the ball people love people that are one step ahead you know if if he can see that what he's told you to do the last job You've, had to, you've done it now without being asked. You know you're going to need water every time. You, you're going to need more water, so just have it ready, you know. Take all them things on board. You'll learn so much quicker. Once once you're up and you're plastering, once you're plastering walls and you're doing a little bit, you know, you're getting little bathrooms on and things like that by yourself, that's the time potentially when you might get a little bit of a pay rise. So just hang out till then. I've had lads start with me, and they start the next amount of money, and then after the month, they want more money. But what can you do extra? What have you actually done extra? Nothing. You're still struggling mixing. You're still struggling cleaning up. I'm still having to tell you the same thing every single day. And now you want more money. You're driving me mad. So, so just 
you know, money will come. Try and master everything. There's no point getting fantastic at plastering a wall if you don't even have to mix a bucket. A lot of lads try and run before they can walk, you know. Master the basics first. If you're no good at cleaning, if you're no good at mixing, if you're no good at getting things loaded up, then why let you loose on a wall? It's because all these things suffer more then, you know. So get these on the about mint first. Become fantastic at them things. And then when you can do that like that, then you can start learning to plaster. Okay, mate. Best of luck to you. Um, L glutamine how's your health now i feel great mate i'm in good health just my voice but apart from that it doesn't hurt it doesn't bother me um i just wish i had my voice back you want to hear me sing you know i've got a hell of a singing voice i can do like um britney spears dolly parton <laughs> when my voice is back um andrew howard my grandson is 16 this year and wants to go to college to learn a trade He's decided he wants to learn plastering, so I've told him to follow your channel. He will learn much more than at college. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Don't spoil him, though. Don't spoil him too much. Um, Michael Woodhouse, uh, do you miss Kevin Kirk? <sighs> yeah, he's, he was a good lad. Uh, do you know... <laughs> I don't know if there's something wrong with me, right? <laughs> I'm one of them people. I don't know why, but, like, I don't miss people. <laughs> that sounds heartless, doesn't it? Like, you know, I can move on like that, you know. Like, I've literally, I've, I've had, you know, lads, you know, you fall out with someone and, and you might have been mates for maybe, I don't know, 10 years and then you fall out of them. Bang, I can, I can just cut people off me, not a problem. <laughs> I mean... I, I like the lad. I've got all the time in the world for him. I mean, it doesn't. I don't think about him when I'm not with him. <laughs> so, he's he's all right. In fact, he does text me once a month or so. You know, he'll text me and say, you know, we need to go for the pints. We keep saying it. We are, you know, we need to catch up and have a game of snooker. I think, but um, yeah, he's he's doing well. He's all right, the lad. He's okay. Right, Deadpool. How are you doing? How are you doing today? I'm all right, mate. Thank you very much. I hope little visitor. Hey, is you okay? Oh, okay. Love you, sweetheart. Love you. See you in the morning. I'll wake you up, okay? I'm up at six. I don't think you are. Okay. Nick. Love you, sweetheart. Good night. What time is it? Um, eight till like, 10 to 11. 10 to 11, okay. All right. Yeah. Tell them what we're in soon, anyway. All right. She's if she, She's asleep. I, mean, I told you she'd be asleep, didn't I? My missus goes to sleep and the kids put themselves to bed because I'm in here talking to you. I'm a bad dad, aren't I, sweetheart? I'm okay, that'll do. I'm okay. I've had the seal of approval. I have to be 12 year old daughter, by the way. Oh, Isabel. Um, uh, G, what's your opinion on flexi finishing trials? Ox, Nella Gold, and uh, when to use them? Um, I've had them all, mate, or not. Most of them. Um, I stopped using them a good few years ago. I personally won't bother with them. Um, yeah, I don't want to go down the whole thing because a lot of these guys have, have heard me go on about this maybe 10 times now. <laughs> but I personally don't bother with the flexi trials, mate. I just... Um, I... They flex, don't they? So they don't get the wall as flat as what they would if you didn't use them. That's the best way of putting it. Uh... Ed Nankville. Mediflex is good, uh, but make sure you finish with a flat, proper Marshall Town or something similar. But there you go, yeah. Uh, JJ, I think that's this new generation. Everything seems instant for them, so they expect everything instantly. <laughs> True. But I remember being that age as well, so, you know. Um, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you an insight. I'll tell you an insight. Do you know where um, you know, there's a bit of... Food for thought. You know, there's next generation, the generation of kids that are coming up now, like our Isabel, 12, got another daughter in there, um, 15, right? And we're going about this generation of kids that, that you know, they're the, the, the lazy and they're this and they're that, and all they want to do is play on the phones and all the rest of it, right? Kids are like empty buckets, aren't they? They're like sponges. 
it's us that are failing them. If this generation that are coming through now are all, you know, soft and lazy and all the rest of it, it's because that's how we've made them. It's on us, guys. It's on us to teach them right. It's on us to, you know, they've got to have chores. They've got to have, you know, I don't think I'll be bringing my kids up the way I was brought up, you know, because <laughs> I'll be in jail. <laughs> but my kids, you know, I spoil them rotten. They, they do get spoiled and they hold me hand up, they do get spoiled, but they don't get away with nothing. So, like, yes, they might be, they seem spoiled because they've got a horse, but guess where they are? Every morning before they go to school, they go down there and they're mucking out. I don't care if it's minus three. You're going down the farm and you're cleaning that horse. It needs feeding, it needs grooming, it needs cleaning. You're going down straight after school. They can be there in the, in the, in the dark, in the pissing down rain, in the pitch black in the middle of a field with a bucket of feed. Okay, so don't let them get away with stuff. They've got to, they've got to have discipline. Um, Aaron Thomas, I wish my oh, I did my apprenticeship in mechanics, but I was working for the builder for sixty a day and painting, so I was chasing the money. It fell on its back, so I wish I did an apprenticeship. To be honest. Yeah, you got to work with what you got, mate. I mean, look, there's always hindsight, isn't there? You know, if I knew what I, when I was a kid, what I know now, I mean, the, well, if, you, if we could all go back, we'd all be millionaires now, wouldn't we? So you just got to look at what where you are now and what you can do, I think, mate. Um, gee, yes, I definitely put on and then flatten with Mars of Town. Nella Gold, you can use earlier than you would with a flexi. Just wanted to know his view. Yeah, do you know, some some guys have... I know loads of fellas that use flexi trials on site and fantastic. Um, I do a lot of private work. That's all I do is domestic work. And if I'm working on high suction backgrounds and stuff, flexi trials are just disastrous because if, you know, if you're laying on and you get a little line and then it pulls in a little bit and you hit it with a flexi, that little line won't go. It'll just become a little bump in the wall. So for me, I just stay away from them now. Maybe sight plastering, perfect, you know. And my opinion is if, if, if I'm going to use it right the way through and I'm only using it for the polish, what's the point? I may as well just stick with what I've already got in my hand, you know. And then I don't need 10 trials to do one wall. So that, that's just my opinion though, you know. I know some fellas love them. Um, JG, better tough love, lot. I have to do it too with mine. Yeah, definitely, mate. Definitely. Um, I'll tell you something interesting as well. I am the, oh, me and my missus, I'm the playful one. My kids know they can, you know, jump on me back and we'll play fight and all the rest of it. And they know that, you know, I'm the soft touch when it comes to dad. Can we have, can we have 20 quid? Can we do this? Can we go here? Can we, you know, can we start a bit later? I'm sort of the soft touch, but I'm also the strict one <laughs> as well, which sounds mad because, how can I put it? My kids, I've always been the one. I'll say something, listen, I'm going to tell you now, if I tell you three times, you're going to get a crack. And I've stood by it. And people say, oh, you shouldn't smack your kids. You shouldn't smack your kids. I've literally only smacked all my kids two or three times each in the whole lives because they know. I'll say to them, I've told you twice now. Twice I've told you to get that room tidied. You know what's going to happen if I have to tell you the third time. And because I've always been consistent, they know. So they just come and do it. So I'm not sort of threatening them, but they know where the boundaries are. Whereas... I don't know. Everyone's got different parents and advice, haven't they? I find if when I say something and I tell them, listen, I'm not joking, I mean it now. You know, you've been told to go to bed. Now go to bed, please. I've told you once now, told you twice. I'm not going to tell you the third time. And they know they'll get a little clip on the back of the legs. They remember it from when they were kids, little tots. So they don't even chance it. They just go. <laughs> Doesn't work on the 20 year old anymore, unfortunately. But uh, and it's sort of started between us, it's wearing off on the 15 year old as well. <laughs> She's sort of like getting her own mind about things now. But the little Izzy, she, little Izzy, she's about fucking six foot. Um, uh, Michael Woodhouse, 100% on the kids' subject, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, UFC casual, uh, how many 10 year olds could you take in a street fight? <laughs> I don't know. If they're anything like my daughters, mate, flipping one at a time because they're hard, hard as nails. 
Dave Smith. Hi, Kurt. Just tuning in. Probably a bit late, as I know you like to sign off and send the kids to bed. <laughs> yeah. Taking themselves to bed, mate, now. I'm a bad parent. Probably have social services watching this coming and getting me for sitting in here whilst the kids are looking after themselves. Um, don't worry, the baby goes to bed. The baby's in bed. The only people that are still awake in my house is my 20-year-old and my 15-year-old and, and me, me 11 year old, 12 year old, just took myself to bed. Um, do you find being a plasterer is bad for your diet? <sighs> no, no. If you if you if you want to be conscious about your diet, mate, then you can you, you can prepare your own food and eat healthy, can't you? Um, eating takeaways, I do eat a, a, a bad diet currently, but that's my choice. You know, it, when, if I want to be training and get myself into good shape, then it's just you just prepare food the night before don't you rather than flipping you know playing on youtube um ed and Phil, i get away with the flexible trials uh, on closing and set and flat with a sponge float i always finish with proper flat bars or towel now yeah spot on ad um <laughs> Michael Woodhouse, <laughs> don't start mike right uh last comment now oh i'm going to call it a day it's, mid, it's 11 o'clock now, so that's enough for me. Um, El Gutmann Kirk, the brown plaster you're using, it's a finishing plaster, right? Yes, mate, correct, that is, yeah. How long did it take you to find and stick to this product? In Holland, obviously, different plaster here, but, um, right, El Gutmann. So the finishing plaster we use in the UK, there's only one company, that, well, that you can get some other stuff, but it's crap. There's only one company that dominate the whole UK market. And it's British Gypsum, and they make board finish and multi finish, and it's both basically the same product. One just takes a little bit longer to set, uh, and and they're both brown. So the stuff we use is pretty much the only stuff we can use here. It's actually, it's I think it's the best plaster in the world. Uh, I'm not just saying it. I have tried foreign stuff, and I just prefer this stuff. Uh, we can get canal finish or naff finish, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but I find it it sags dead easy. If you try and build any thickness up, it just drips out. And I find that with a lot of sort of um, the the foreign plasters as such. Um, anyway, um, UFC casual, a bit late, but I uh, you don't give you kids a little smack now sometimes. Also in the future. Right, yeah, sorry, I've, I couldn't read that properly, but I'm on to what you're saying. If you don't give your kids a little clip now and then, someone else will do in the future. Yes, I've come across lots of little gobby brats in the, in the past. Guys, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to call it a night. It's 11 o'clock. It's been emotional. Signing off. Take it easy, gents. I'll see you next Sunday. I'm going to pop a video out in between as well. Take it easy, guys. God bless. <laughs>